fourth graders, we're going to start today with a number talk. If you have never done a number talk with me before, get ready. We are going to think using mental math strategies. So we're going to use some basic facts to kind of help us solve harder problems. So I want you to get your mind going. We're going to need some of our basic math um, multiplication facts for this number talk. Okay, so here we go. I just want to remind you of this fact. What is eight times five? You probably know this one. Eight times five is 40. All right, how about eight times two? Do you guys know that one? Are you yelling at me? You're probably yelling 16. I hear you, I hear you, I got it, I got it. You know your facts, okay. So these facts can help us solve harder problems, right? So you've probably guessed the problem I'm gonna give you has an eight in it, and that's true. So this is the problem I want you to solve mentally, and I want you to really think flexibly with your strategies. Here it comes. All right, so let's think, eight times 56, what would you do? Everybody hit pause, and I want you to think about what strategy you would use to solve eight times 56. Okay, I hit pause too. I had to think through my strategies. Are you ready? I'm gonna guess your strategies. So let's see here. Maybe some of you decided to split the 56 into a 50 and a six. Did anybody do that? So maybe you decided to use place value. You know that's a 50 and that's a six. So eight times 50, eight times, actually we're still doing eight times 56. So I'm gonna write 56 up top. I'm gonna break that into a 50 and a six. I'm kind of pretending that there are squares in here, but I don't have room or time to draw out 56 squares um, eight times. Oof, that I would lose my mind and lose all of my train of thought, right? So we just use this unmarked array. So I'm gonna split this array into eight times 50, which I already know, because I know eight times five. And eight times five is 40, so that means eight times 50 is 400, because it's 10 times more. All right, so 400 would go there. Now, I have eight times six. Eights and sixes are kind of harder for me to think about in my mind, so usually I think about eight times five to help me with eight times six. So eight times five is 40, so eight times six would be one more group of eight, so 48. I'm gonna guess some of you probably did that. And then maybe you joined those together. So 40 plus 48, or 400 plus 48 equals 448. Did anybody do that? Raise your hand if you did that one. All right, I've got more guesses here. Let's see, that was guess numero uno. Let me see, maybe some of you thought about doing, I don't know, did anyone do eight times 60? Maybe you did, and then you took off the extras? I don't know, let's try it. Let's see what it would look like. Okay, so we're actually gonna solve eight times 60. Now, why would we do that? Well, maybe because you know how to multiply by tens, and this is a multiple of 10. So eight times 60 is actually what? Well, if you knew what eight times six was, you know eight times 60 is 480. So maybe some people did that. But then we actually have extra groups because we actually only wanted 56. So I'm gonna have to slice some of this 480 off. This whole thing is 480. I'm gonna have to slice off the four extra groups because we only really needed 56. We added four more groups to make 60. Okay, whoa, if your mind is getting blown right now, just see if you can stop and analyze the picture. I know some of you out there did this strategy and I wanna see how many of you did this. Okay, so we already know what eight times 60, or eight times 60 is 480, right? Now, what's eight times four? Hmm, 
8 times 4 equals, well, that's actually one of my basic facts. Because 8 times 2 is 16, so 8 times 4 is twice that amount, 32. Okay, now, I added on this much extra, so maybe I'll take it off now. What do you think about that? Is your mind getting blown right now? I don't know. Okay, so let's see. 8 times 60. 8 times 60 was 480. But we added this much on to make it friendly, and now we've got to take it off. Okay, so we have to take off the 32. So 480 minus 32 equals 448. Whoa. I'm going to guess some of you probably did 10 times 56 and then took off two extra groups of 56. Did anybody do that? There are so many ways to think about this, right? I'm going to guess that most of you probably split the 56 into a 50 and a 6 and did 8 times 50 is 400 and 8 times 6 is 48. Guess what, kids? That's good news if you know how to do that because that is what you have to know as a fourth grader. So that's lucky, right? That's the distributive property. Okay, we're getting ready for our lesson. So I'm going to erase all this stuff and I'll see you back here in just a second. Hey, kids, here it is. Chapter two, lesson six. Are you ready? This is like the front page of chapter two, lesson six. So we are gonna get ready to solve five times 143. Now, let's check it out. Can you hear my dogs barking? They're saying hello. All right, so five times 143, you probably know 143 can be broken down into 140 and three, because we know place value, right? So it's just like when we were younger, using those number bonds to break down numbers. It's still happening even now. It's so important that we know how to do this, right? Because we can figure out how to multiply larger numbers. Okay, so let's check it out. I'm going to draw an area model. There's my neighbor, Rocky. Can you hear him barking? It's like they just talk to each other back and forth all day long. Okay, so five would go here. I know that would be five right there because this side is much shorter than this side here. So that has to be the five and 143 is gonna be much longer. Okay, so I'm gonna break the 143 into 140 and three. So 100 plus 40 plus three. Okay, so this is much easier for me to do in my head. Now, does anyone remember the name of this property when you break things apart and pass them out in pieces? So we broke apart the 143 and we're going to multiply each piece by the 5. That's called the distributive property. Did you remember that? Okay, so we're going to use the distributive property. So 5 times 100 would be, lucky us, we probably know that. 500. So, so far, this piece was 5 times 100. I think I'm going to actually go ahead and color code. Okay, so that one's going to be green. So, uh, 5 times 100 was 500. Okay, now I'm going to do the next piece in orange. So, 5 times 40. Well, I know 5 times 4 is 20, and then I know 5 times 4D would be 200. Okay, so let's do 200. All right, so I think I'm going to use orange for this one. So that's this piece here. So 5 times 40. Okay, and the last piece is five times three. Lucky us, we know this one. Five, 10, 15. Okay, so that one's gonna be 15. So I'm just doing each piece. Five times 100 is 500. Five times 40 is 200. 
five times three is 15. I'm gonna make that one pink. Oops, forgot to write the actual five times three in there. Five times three. Okay, so that was 15. Oh my gosh, you guys. I wish I had a class here in front of me so you could be like, you forgot to write the 200, Mrs. Compton. There, that's what it should look like. Okay, so we broke each piece down and now we have to find the total. So in order to find the total, I have to add my partial products. Remember, this is part of the product. You put them all together, you get the whole product. All right, here we go. So 500 plus 200 is 700, plus 15 more is 715. So that means this is also 715, which means that is also 715. So the big moral of the story today is you can break apart numbers to multiply and make it easier for yourself. Don't put your brain through trauma. You got to make things nice and easy with some good strategies. All right. Don't forget, this was called the distributive property. All right, kids. See you next time. Bye.